let me present a patch antenna we have just fabricated it's a use slot patch antenna and this is a dual band antenna uh, this yellowish part is FR4 substrate having a dielectric constant of 4.3 a little bit thicker 4.5 millimeter this is the side view basically we join three 1.5 millimeter FR4 substrate to get a 4.5 millimeter thickness and the higher thickness ensures good directivity of the antenna and the bandwidth is also uh, extended due to the use of higher thickness substrate material this is the bottom view of the antenna this is a ground plane it reflects the electromagnetic signal and uh, this connector is basically SMA connector which is soldered permanently to the antenna we are uh, feeding the antenna by using cordial probe method so definitely the inner conductor of this SMA connector which is not visible is soldered to the patch and the soldering mark is here you can see it it's clear and the inner conductor is basically inserted uh, through this substrate so we have to drill the substrate and then uh, solder to the patch it's a quite small design I can uh, hold it in my palm it's pretty small 53 millimeter the largest dimension it's beautiful this is a coaxial cable we are going to feed the antenna by using uh, this coaxial cable the intrinsic impedance uh, of this coaxial cable is 50 ohm it's written on the cable thing is written here I think in the, but 50 but it cannot be read I think it's pretty small to see in the camera screen this is written there 50 ohm and uh, this connector is SMA male connector is uh, there is a pin and this is basically SMA female connector so we can couple these two connectors and uh, we can feed the antenna by using this cordial cable we fabricated the antenna by using uh, the traditional printed circuit board technology initially we brought uh, this this type of PCB board if I force up a straight down both of the sides are covered by copper layer thin copper layer and then uh, we we printed the image of the patch in a PCB design software and we printed it uh, on, the, on a special photo paper it's a thermally sensitive photo paper then we place the photo paper on the on top of this copper layer and we apply the heat after application of the heat for 15 minutes approximately the, uh, and uh, the image was transferred from the photo paper to 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 this couple layer of the FF substrate and uh, then uh, then we dissolve uh, this region which we don't need into the acid basically this uh, covered region uh, is acting like a mask which is acid resistant so even though we we punch this entire structure into the acid this covered region will not be affected by the acid and the rest of the uncovered region will be dissolved by the acid acid and uh, then uh, after dissolving it into by the acid the final design was like this the process of transferring the image uh, from the photo paper to the copper layer uh, is known as thermolithography because we were applying heat and there is another lithography process is which is called photolithography where the light beam is used instead of heat to transfer the image from photo paper to PCB board and the dissolving of the copper I mean the metal from the PCB board by the use of acid solution is called wet etching these are all very common techniques uh, in uh, PCB board printed circuit board technology and uh, this is another fabrication but it's a single band antenna and uh, you can see there's a microstrip transmission line so we are not 
feeding this antenna by using Coil Pro, but we are feeding this antenna by using Macrisky transmission line method. And this is a single band antenna. It resonates at 1.8 gigahertz. Same substrate, 1.4 uh, FR4 substrate, 4.3 dielectric constant, but the thickness is less, 1.5 millimeter. It's uh, single band, and that's the double band. That's all. Thank you for watching this video.